Hi students, this week we're thinking about what aesthetic experiences using the first chapter from John Dewey's book, Art as Experience. So as you're reading Art, is Ex Art as Experience by John Dewey, I want you to think about how he's describing aesthetic experience and how it's related to our everyday lives. So John Dewey is an American philosopher um, and psychologist. He also was a social activist. He comes from the sort of philosophical school that we call American pragmatism, although he preferred to call it social naturalism. But American pragmatism focuses on how philosophy can be of practical use in our everyday lives and in changing our social world. He was very dedicated to education. He was a big believer in democracy. You can get some sense of that in this chapter that you read. And art as experience is considered one of the most important contributions to American aesthetics in the 20th century. So this is a very important book and very widely read. One of his main goals in art as experience is to try to take art off of its pedestal. He says that there's all sorts of factors that have kind of glorified art and put it off on this far away pedestal away from our everyday lives. Um, it's kind of set it apart. Um, when students talk about their concerns about art being really elitist, this is the same thing that Dewey is talking about, is we seem to elevate art above our everyday lives and give it this sort of special status. He calls that concept of art, art on its sort of special pedestal where we spiritualize it or we treat art like a religion or something only for um, the sort of elite. He calls that the compartmental conception of art. It compartmentalizes art. He says that there's many different sources for how art got put on this pedestal in the first place. He says, first of all, there's sort of this culture around having an unquestioned admiration for works of art, especially ones that are deemed classic. Um, and when we give classic status to a work of art, we take it out of its original context. We don't consider it really in terms of how it was a part of the ordinary life of people. He uses the Parthenon as an example of that, this beautiful ancient Greek um, building that would have been a part of Athenians' lives and people would have done all sorts of their daily activities in relation to this building. It would be incorporated into their lives. But now we treat it like tourists, right? We think it's the significant work of art that we should know, but we don't really experience it. He says that in many ways, we've sort of dislocated um, and divided our lives in modernity. And that has a lot to do with sort of social stratification, uh, mass culture, the, the sort of mass production, uh, the sort of industrialization. There's all sorts of things that have caused these sort of dislocations that he's describing. But essentially what happens is fine art gets removed from the everyday experience that we have and it gets put on this pedestal. It gets put in these sort of special spaces where it's removed from our lives. He says that another reason why art gets sort of um, divided from everyday experience is the sort of classism, right? He says that there's a sort of vulgarity of class exhibition that's a part of the 20th century. He says also that, you know, the spaces where we put art, museums and galleries, they tend to be memorials to the past. They celebrate the rise of nationalism. They celebrate imperialism. That's a huge problem, right? The fact that a lot of museums are just remnants of all these European conquests of other nations where you steal their stuff and you put it in your museum. And so really what they do is they celebrate the past. They celebrate imperialism. They celebrate nationalism. And all of that for Dewey is not really related to our everyday lives, um, to our experiences and to what is meaningful and purposeful for us. So mass production um, also kind of um, is something that uh, changes the everyday world and separates art from it. He says that artists um, are often elevated in this way, um, away from mass produced things, and they have to kind of overemphasize their uniqueness. They have to overcompensate for the fact they can't produce millions of their thing. They're just making one painting or one sculpture. And so they end up kind of like acting very eccentric. And so there's this way that the uniqueness of the artist or the uniqueness of a work of art gets over exaggerated because of mass production. Instead of having this very compartmentalized remote notion of art where art is removed from everyday experience, 
Dewey wants us to have an integrated concept of art. And he says that art used to be a lot more integrated into our lives. He says that if we look at what art used to be, it used to be very much about the enhancement of the processes of our everyday lives. And he's thinking about the sort of garments and jewelry that people would wear that would be a sort of meaningful expression of themselves. He's thinking about cave paintings, right? So caves are not these sort of special spaces like a gallery or art museum. They're sort of, um, these would have been social spaces for people. He's also thinking of the use of music and drama in celebration and rituals. And he also mentions the fact that drama used to be a part of history. So before there were history books um, where you would read about the past, there used to be all these stories and they would be told out loud to a community and performed. So the Iliad was not something um, that Homer wrote. It was something that he recorded. That was a sort of... Um, story that people would tell over and over and over again. And then he wrote it down. So there wasn't sort of this distinction between myth and legend and sort of narrative stories and fiction and history that we have now. So there's a sort of division between knowledge and art that happens later, but art used to be so incorporated into how we understood ourselves and how we understood the past and the world. So for Dewey, there's really this con um, continuation of social life that we see in older practices around art. And he thinks that in modernity, we've kind of lost that continuation. So now he says we have this chasm between aesthetic experience and ordinary experience. And the entire point of his book is to close that gap and bring aesthetic experience back into community with our ordinary everyday lives. And he does this by arguing that art is experience. Art isn't a part of some separate realm. It's not removed from the material world. It's not removed from our sort of ordinary lives where we're breathing and walking and thinking and moving around our environments. He says that we really need to think about art as a sort of heightened experience that rests on our ordinary lives. And he uses this metaphor. He says, mountain peaks don't float unsupported. So if we have these amazing experiences in art, those are not sort of resting in the sky. They're connected to what grounds us in this world. And so he builds this sort of argument about how we can approach art by talking about the relationship between an organism and its environment. So he wants to think about how we relate to art in terms of our sort of living processes, which is why he describes what life is like for any sort of living creature in its environment. So lived experience involves having vital needs, um, breathing, moving, looking, listening, thinking are all tied to the sort of needs we have that keep us alive. And he talks about there being these sort of exchanges between the organism and the environment that have to do with satisfying needs, but he calls them intimate. They're special. The way we relate to our environment is something very special. He talks about animals expressing their needs and desires, their howling, uh, dogs wagging their tail and all sorts of things like that. And he also talks about the sort of cycle that anything that alive is alive goes through. So there's cycles of being enriched by the environment and growing. And there's also cycles of, you know, merely subsisting or surviving, like during winter when there's less resources available. And there's also death. So there's all sorts of life and death cycles involved in how we relate to our environment. And Dewey describes that as the organism kind of falling in and out of rhythm with its environment. Um, there's this sort of tension when a need is not being met and then we strive to meet it and we meet it and we reach harmony and stability and then we fall out of step again. And so he's thinking of this waxing and waning, this sort of growth and uh, death uh, <laughs> as in a meaningful part of life. And he thinks that art has that same rhythm too. Art expresses that. And it's partly because all of our emotions are gonna originate in those tensions that we experience in life. Our sort of struggle for life is biological and it's physical and it's related to the material world. And for Dewey, that is where purpose comes from. So even though per the 
sort of purpose is a value or an ideal, it is connected to this sort of living struggle we have with our world because we do have those vital needs just like an animal does. So when Dewey's talking about art as experience, he's trying to talk about experience as connecting us to the world. So experience for him is not a private feeling or sensation, right? Sometimes when I talk about my experience of something, I think that it's only mine and it belongs to me and you don't know anything about it. And I have this sort of defensiveness when I talk about my own experiences. And for Dewey, he thinks like, that's not quite what we're talking about. We're talking about experience happening within a context, happening within an environment. And that involves relations to our world, that involves relations to others, that involves relations to all sorts of objects and events in the world that we belong to. Experience is something that shows how we are open up and dependent upon our environment. And we need to nourish those connections we have to the world and to each other. And so when he's talking about art being a sort of heightened experience, he's thinking about how art involves this sort of what he calls a complete interpenetration of the self and the world of objects and events. So art for him is about really making us a part of this present moment where we experience our connection to the world. And his description of being in the present, uh, just like an animal is in the present, he thinks art kind of gives us that moment in a very special way. So I hope you enjoy reading Dewey and thinking about art as an experience. And I'm very much looking forward to your thoughts on Dewey. Thank you so much.